Do you need a change of heart and the mind of Christ? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Once a king was walking through the streets of the capital city when he came upon a beggar who immediately asked him for money. The king did not give him any money. Instead, he invited him to his palace. The beggar took up the king's offer, and on the appointed day, he made his way to the royal palace and was duly ushered into the king's presence. However, as he came into the king's presence, he was acutely conscious of his rags and felt ashamed of them. They were an eloquent symbol of the wretchedness of his life. The king, an exceptionally kind man, received him warmly, took pity on him, and among other things, gave him a new suit of clothes. However, a few days later, the beggar was back to begging on the streets, dressed in his old rags. Why did he give up the new suit? Because he knew that to wear it would mean that he would have to live a new life. It would mean giving up the life of a beggar. This he was not prepared to do. It wasn't that the new life did not appeal to him. It was just that a change of life would be slow, painful, and uncertain. In other words, he was too much steeped in habit to change. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus replies to a logical question raised by some Pharisees on why Jesus' disciples feasted while John's disciples and all the Pharisees prayed and fasted. Our reflection today revolves around the metaphors Jesus used. First, Jesus compares himself to a bridegroom in a wedding banquet. He assures them that when the celebration is through and the bridegroom is taken away, his disciples will fast. In the same way, we Christians should always be joyful in both good and tough times, for we are never alone. God is with us and we know he will not forsake us. Fasting brings forth a supernatural joy that connects us to our God when we clear the passages of our consciousness from the cravings for human pleasures so that we are able to grasp the entirety of God's being. Second, Jesus compares the Jews to a piece of new cloth to patch torn old clothing and storing new wine on old wineskins. The old clothing will only tear and the wineskin will only burst, leaving to waste the acts of mending and storing we do. The traditional way of exercising love for God, that of strict adherence to the 613 provisions of the Mosaic Law, must be subsumed into the law of love that Jesus is teaching us. Relationships must be rooted in love, that which seeks the well-being of the other, not loss alone. And if we have difficulty, as Paul speaks of, to have a mind of Christ, we will not find joy in living and love in every being. As Christians, we need to always be open to the authority and teachings of the Church. The Holy Spirit should not be boxed in only by the old. We must be open to the Church's new ideas, new ways to replace the old. The Pharisaic mindset is still evident today, even after the Second Vatican Council put forth guidance on how we should worship, for example, they hold on to traditions with much stubbornness and disobedience. One aspect of loving God is love of our Catholic faith and the leaders God has anointed for our church. We continue to abide by the three sources of our Catholic faith, the Bible, tradition, and our church magisterium. Revelations from the Old and New Testament form part of our biblical inspiration, but gaps of narration in the timeline of the Bible are supplemented by traditions that have been passed on to the ages. And the Holy Spirit works through His anointed leader, the Pope, aided by the hierarchical structure of the Church, to formulate ways for us to enliven, deepen, and practice our faith. A final point through this story of two couples. The first couple gets married in a beautiful church, pledging to love each other till death do them part. But their life together has been fraught with physical and verbal abuse. To top it, they have been both unfaithful. The second couple is not married. They couldn't afford it. No vows were exchanged, but their life together is full of love, faithfulness, and sacrifice for each other's well-being. 
Which couple would you say is doing the will of God? Both need a change of heart. Couple A in the way they act towards each other and couple B in their attitudes about the importance of the words in a public ceremony. Indeed, life is complex. If you are to respond to our Lord's call for holiness and answer life's questions, let us be guided by the Holy Spirit who can lead us to the mind of Christ. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, let your Holy Spirit guide me in all areas of my life so that I will be obedient to your will and to the commandment of Jesus to love one another. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.